how God tests you before your reality changes. The longer I walk with the Lord, the more I come to understand that in our journey with God, there will be times when obedience will precede understanding. It's in our human nature to want to understand everything before we act in obedience. However, the reality is that God will not always provide explanations for his commands. We cannot base our relationship with God on receiving explanations for everything that happens on earth and in our lives. There are events in our lives that we may not comprehend. In our journey with God, there will be moments when we must obey even when we don't fully understand. We journey back to a pivotal moment in biblical history to understand that very essence, obedience before understanding. How God tests you before your reality changes. Let's reflect on a man named Abraham, an epitome of faith and trust. Many of us know his story. Abraham, the great patriarch called by God to journey into the unknown. Yet it was on the mountainous plains of Moria where Abraham's faith would face its sternest test. Imagine the scene. God tells Abraham to take his son, his only son Isaac, whom he loves, and offer him as a burnt offering, a request so staggering it defies our human comprehension. Can you feel the weight of that command, the wrenching of a father's heart, the confusion, the agony, the desperation? But here's what is profound. The scriptures do not recount a debate, a negotiation, or even a prolonged pause. Instead, we witness immediate unflinching obedience an obedience before understanding. Genesis 22 verses 1 to 13, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they, I, they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. It is important for us to understand that. Abraham did not possess a divine blueprint detailing every twist and turn. He did not have the luxury of a hindsight. What he had was a command from the Almighty and a heart tuned to obey. You see, for Abraham, obedience wasn't a secondary act. It was an instinctual primary response. It came before understanding, before clarity, before any revelation of the bigger picture. However, in this act of obedience, I want to show you true faith, true Bible faith. Genesis 22, 4, 5 presents us with a heart-wrenching scenario. God commands Abraham to sacrifice his beloved son Isaac. Yet Abraham's response, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you is one of supreme confidence. What striking faith. God had just told him to do the unthinkable. Yet Abraham's declaration suggests a hope, a belief, a trust in something greater. Abraham was not blindly declaring that he and his son would return. Instead, he was speaking from a depth of faith, 
reflecting his unwavering trust in God's plan and his promise. For those who hear this story and wonder about the juxtaposition of God's command and Abraham's statement, it's crucial to probe deeper into Abraham's faith. Now let's turn our attention to the New Testament. In Hebrews 11:19, the scripture illuminates Abraham's mindset, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Abraham believed that even if he were to follow through with God's command, God had the power to raise Isaac from the dead. That's where his hope was anchored. In the very face of despair and the seemingly contradictory command of God, Abraham held tight to his unwavering faith. He believed in a God of resurrection, a God of life, and a God of the impossible. This is not just a lesson about Abraham's past, but a message for our present. Every one of us has faced, or will face, moments when God's will and our understanding seem at odds. There are times when God's commands, His paths, His plans for us might seem challenging, maybe even insurmountable. But the story of Abraham and Isaac is a beacon of hope shining across millennia to tell us that when God commands, He also provides. When He takes away, He can also restore. And when He brings death, He can also bring resurrection. What Abraham teaches us is that faith isn't just about believing when things make sense. True faith is about trusting God even when they don't. It's about believing that even in our most challenging moments, God has a plan and purpose that might be beyond our current understanding. And this is something that you need to know and remember your faith will be tested, your faith will be put on trial, your faith will go through the fire, your faith will be put through the waters, your faith will have to stand against giants, your faith will have to climb the highest mountains, your faith will delve the deepest valleys. So stand firm, stand unshaken, stand in faith. When you are put on trial, when you go through the fire, when you are put through the waters, God is working something far greater in you than you can ever imagine. Take heart, for you will come forth as gold, purified, sanctified, and wholly surrendered to God. Your faith will not only endure, it will triumph, because our God is a God of victory, resurrection, and endless love. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Uh, the Bible says that secret things belong to God. There are things that we are never going to know. There are facts that we will never discover. And I believe that in our own personal lives, there are secret things of God that we know nothing about, but He does. Is there something going on in your life? And you are asking God, God, why is this happening to me? I want to know why this is happening in my life. How can you allow this to happen to me? We find ourselves grappling with this mystery because God has not revealed to us His purpose. You look at your life and wonder how you got to the stage you are at even after so many battles that have confronted you. You look at your life and cannot explain what has been happening, but God is telling you, don't worry, I got you. This is the time to start trusting God. This is the time for you to start accepting the plans of God in your life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Just know that there are some things that only God knows about. You are not to know anything about it, but you are just required to follow with faith. And there are so many children of God who cry out and say, I am trying all I can, but I am failing. I feel as if the world is against me and I don't want to try again. Why, God, is this happening to me? Storms are blowing at me. So many challenges are coming at me. And I feel as if you have left me, God. I want to know the secret things of God in my life. I want you to tell me why, God, why is this happening to me? And all God is saying to you today is trust in me. I won't fail you. Trust in me. I will never forsake you. Trust in me. I will never leave you. Trust in me. I promise I will be there for you. No matter the difficulty of life that you are facing, no matter what the enemy has brought against you, no matter what the devil has done to you, I will be with you and I will never leave you or forsake you.
I am the same God that spoke to Moses in the burning bush. I am the same God that said to Moses, I am that I am. And that means I will be whatever you need me to be when you need me to be. When you need a lawyer, I will be your lawyer. When you need a doctor, I will be your doctor. When you need a brother, I will be your brother. So I ask you today, my friend, why don't you trust God? Some things must have happened to you and you are saying, God, why me? Mm, there are events that have transpired in your life and you can't make any sense of these occurrences. You don't have to worry about these things. You can just trust God. God has never failed anyone and he is not about to start failing you today trust in him the bible says in romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose this is the word of the lord for you this is what god wants you to follow it doesn't matter the current condition and you cannot make sense of anything happening god wants you to trust him he requires your faith he needs you to believe in him wholeheartedly don't let your current situation shift your focus from God. The reason many people fail and continue to fail is that they have drifted from God. They don't trust his process anymore. They think they can rely solely on their understanding. The reality is that human knowledge can fail in times of trouble and only those who trust in the Lord will remain steadfast. Are you placing your trust in the Lord? When he instructs you to take action, do you follow without hesitation? God will only reveal what he deems necessary and the rest remains with him. He simply asks for your trust. I often believe that when God withholds certain information from us, it is for our benefit. In the tapestry of life, it's often the threads of uncertainty woven with the strands of faith that create the most beautiful patterns. Our walk with God is never promised to be a journey of clarity at every step but rather one of trust, belief, and obedience. The essence of the message today revolves around the core principle, obedience before understanding. Like Abraham, we too face moments where God's command may seem contradictory to our understanding or human reasoning. Yet, in those very moments, true faith emerges. It's a faith that does not demand explanations, but simply obeys, trusting that God's plan, though not always understood, is always for our good. The challenges and tests we face, the secret things we may never comprehend, are all part of God's divine design to mold, refine, and prepare us. So, as we navigate the terrains of life, let us remember to place obedience before understanding to trust even when we cannot trace God's hand and to believe that God's tests always precede our greatest transformations. Uh, for in the end, it's not our understanding, but our unwavering obedience that brings us closer to God's heart.